Hey everybody, welcome to the third episode of my sock knitting podcast. My name is Summer with Summerly Design Co. and I am an obsessive sock knitter and I design sock knitting patterns. Um, in today's episode, I've got a lot to go over. I've gotten a lot of new yarn, been on a trip, I've seen a hurricane, um, <laughs> and I've knit a lot of socks. So I've definitely got a lot to share with you, plus dating stories. Um, you can check out the first two episodes of my podcast here on my YouTube channel. I will link those in the description to this video. Um, you can also subscribe if you want to keep seeing tutorial videos. If you want to see um, more of this podcast, you can also comment on this episode if there's things you want me to talk about in future episodes. Um, and of course, your likes are always appreciated. I read every single comment. I'm so grateful for all the interaction you guys have given to these videos. And um, I'm just, yeah, I'm really thankful that you guys take the time to leave me such kind comments and um, seem to like all of my random stories that I go off on whenever I do these podcasts. So um, super grateful. So let's go ahead and dive into what we're going to talk about today. I don't have any dad stories for you today. In my last episode, <laughs> I talked about uh, how my dad can never say the right thing. And um, he and my mom actually watched that podcast episode and he told me not to talk about him <laughs> anymore. He was laughing when he said it, but I, I think he was genuinely, he might have been genuinely unhappy with me for uh, telling that story. I don't know. So um, I will not, not tell any more stories about my dad. I'll try not to. It's hard not to. He's such a big part of my life, so it's hard not to tell stories. And he does so many funny things. So it's like, you don't want people to talk about you. Don't do funny things. <laughs> but anyways, I'll try my best not to tell any dad stories, but one might sneak in. I can't help it. Um, I'm also going to be talking about the yarn, the hurricane. Um, and then I'll go into some of the socks that I've been knitting. There's, there's quite a few. I've got a lot of socks coming up. That's all I do is knit socks. I love, 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 love knitting socks. I've also got dating stories. I, as promised in my last episode, I told you, I would tell you about the boy who shoved meat inside of his like packaged steaks inside of his pants. So I'll talk about that. Um, but first, let's talk about what I've been up to. Um, so the last couple of weeks have been really, really busy. Um, we went to Florida, to the Panhandle, the Redneck Riviera, um, for a little beach getaway. And I planned this thing so meticulously to avoid all contact with people so we could do it as safely as possible and avoid COVID, all of that. So. Um, we drove down there. We did not go to restaurants. We did not go to bars, none of that. I rented us a condo that was its own kind of contained unit with exterior access, no elevators. It was a small unit, so the beach was really open, not very crowded. That was important. All of that, and I did not count on a hurricane. So um, we had to deal with Hurricane Sally. When we initially left, it wasn't even a thing. Like it was just kind of like a collection of like stormy stuff <laughs> at the tip of Florida. Um, and then it developed into a tropical storm and then a hurricane and it was initially tracking west and then it decided to change course and track east to where we were going. Um, so that was interesting. I've never experienced hurricanes before. I don't, I live in a landlocked state, so that's not something I'm familiar with. We get a lot of tornadoes here, supercell storms, know all about those, but a hurricane was not something I've ever experienced. And for those of you who live in hurricane prone areas, I don't know how you do it. Like those are long events. I mean, tornadoes kind of like blow through and then they're gone. Um, we might get several days where we have a lot of thunderstorm development and potential for a tornado and you kind of have to be paying attention to the weather. But once a storm like forms, they move pretty fast and then they're gone and the sun comes out and you can go outside and survey <laughs> the destruction. Um, and then of course, there's plenty of videos of people in Oklahoma who are just sitting on their porch watching a tornado come at them or mowing the lawn while there's a tornado in the background. So that's kind of what we're used to. But with hurricanes, they just hang around and they just rain rain, rain. And the wind was insane. I've never felt wind like that. It was blowing my shirt up. I had to like, hold on. I didn't know it could do that. So, um, it was really, really interesting. We lost power in the condo that we were staying in. Um, yeah, so it was definitely not the relaxing kind of 
getaway that I had planned, but you know, I guess I got to experience a category two hurricane. Um, but there was a lot of flooding, a lot of, you know, when we were driving home, we could see all the trees that were bent over. I mean, it was like, they just went wah, like that. So, um, it was an interesting experience, but on the way to the, <laughs> to Florida, um, we stopped in a little town called McKinney, Texas, which is North of Dallas. And there's a fantastic yarn store there called the McKinney Knittery. Um, and I was able to get a lot of really good yarn. We went there twice on the way there and then on the way home because I live in Oklahoma and that's like a three and a half hour drive. So if I'm anywhere near a cool yarn store, I'm going to go as many times as I possibly can. And that is just what I did. So I'm going to show you some of the really cool yarn that I got at McKinney and it actually matched my shorts I was wearing that day. And I didn't plan that. It just kind of happened. <laughs> But I got a lot of tonals. So on my first trip, I bought speckled stuff. I got this Madeline Tosh. This is Madeline Tosh Twist Light, and the color is silver lining, and it's very coppery. And it really does look like the sky after a storm in Oklahoma, funnily enough. There's a lot of really beautiful deep grays and blues, and then there's this kind of burst of copper, and it kind of looks like when there's a storm and the storm clouds are clearing out and you get some beautiful, brilliant orange sunset action happening. So really cool color name because it really does look just like the silver lining like after a storm. Um, I don't know what I'm going to use this for yet, but it's in my stash and it's waiting. Um, do you guys, I actually talked about this a little bit in my Instagram stories where, um, you know, you buy a really special yarn and someone had mentioned, I didn't ask me anything and someone had mentioned, how do you use really special yarn? Like, you know, she talked about just being afraid basically to use this really beautiful, cool yarn or having anxiety about it. And I totally get that. I will buy yarn and not know what I'm going to use it for. And sometimes it's just so beautiful and I want to save it for something really special. And I think that's okay. Like I think yarn can hang out in your stash for years until you're ready to use it until the perfect pattern comes along or you get that perfect idea. And that's usually what happens. I will have yarn in my stash for months and it's just there and I love knowing it's there. And then one day I'll get an idea and I'll think, oh, that yarn, that'll be perfect. And then I'll go grab it. So I'm totally cool with not using special yarn until you're ready to. Um, sometimes you just have to let the yarn tell you what it wants to be. <laughs> so, you know, if you've got really special yarn in your stash and you're anxious about using it, I know it's expensive. I mean, yarn is not not cheap always. I mean, you can get affordable yarn, but a lot of beautiful yarn that we fall in love with, you know, you have to pay for that artistry. You have to pay for all the time that that dyer put into that. And so there is a little bit of like, oh, I don't want to use this unless it's something really special. And I get that. And I'm fine with it. I will let yarn hang out for as long as it wants to hang out until it tells me what it wants to be. So that's the case with this. It'll eventually let me know what it wants to be, what kind of socks it wants to make, because it will most assuredly be socks. That's all I need. <laughs> so that was my first trip to McKinney. I also bought yarn that I've already, <laughs> already used. This will sit a while. This is Hedgehog Fibers Fly, and it's their sock yarn, the 90-10, 90% merino, 10% nylon. And I was intending to put this in my stash when I got home. But once we got to Florida, I was like, light bulb, I need to knit a pair of Mermaid Avenue socks while I'm at the beach so I can photograph Mermaid Avenue socks in the sand with the ocean. So I immediately wound this by hand, did not bring my um, skein winder thing, whatever it's called, you know, the, um, the umbrella thingy. <laughs> I know what it's called. I'm just drawing a blank. Um, I didn't bring that with me and I haven't wound by hand in a long time and I forgot how hard that is on the old back. That was horrible. <laughs> My back was sore like the rest of the evening from that, but I had to knit with it. I had to make a pair of Mermaid Avenue socks. I'll show you those in a little bit. So that yarn's already gone. That was my first trip to the McKinney Knittery. On the way home, after dealing with a hurricane all week, one good beach day, I was like, I'm stopping at that yarn store again. So we did and I spent like an hour and it was wonderful and I came out with these for delicious tonals. Um, I love hand painted speckled. I also love tonals for mixing and matching cool color combinations. And like all four of these go together. I just love them so much. This is, I don't even know what you would call this. The official color is Frank Ochre, I think is what it's called. I can't really read that very well. It's number 35, um, but it's amazing. It's like this really beautiful, greenish coppery yellow 
and it's really, really good. I love Malabrigo. Malabrigo is pretty affordable. They're $20 usually for their sock yarn, and that's pretty good for hand-dyed, beautiful colors, and they always, it's really good quality. I love Malabrigo. The other Malabrigo I got was just Fuchsia. That's an easy one. I can pronounce that one. Um, so this is a really beautiful, vibrant pink, and I love mixing pinks with oranges. I like mixing them with coppery ochres. Um, pink can really just mix with anything. When I was a kid, I hated pink. I didn't have pink anything. I liked blues and greens and just thought pink was the yickiest. And now I love it. I wearing pink shorts, wearing pink socks currently. I'd show you them, but I'm not that flexible. <laughs> but so yeah, love pink, got that. More hedgehog fibers. This is UFO and it is just another beautiful, brilliant yellow. I love yellow and I think I especially gravitate towards it when winter is coming because it's going to get real brown. I don't know where you live, but winter in Oklahoma is the absolute ugliest. All the grass turns brown, trees are brown. We don't have a lot of evergreen trees like they do in the Pacific Northwest. So it's just brown, brown, brown and strip malls and billboards. That's what Oklahoma <laughs> looks like in the winter where I live. Brown and then strip malls and then billboards. And that's, well, it's horrible. So I think I gravitate towards really bright colors for winter because I know I'm not gonna get to see much looking out my window. So I can at least look at my yarn stash and look at these brilliant bright colors. Um, so that's that one. And then the fourth one I got on my second trip was long dog yarn. And this colorway is enchanted and it is enchanting. Indeed, I love this color. It's a really beautiful, deep, warm purple. I don't like cool purples. That's not really my thing. Purple is not my favorite color, but occasionally you come across a really beautiful, warm purple and this is it. It's absolutely gorgeous and it just looks so good with this, especially this. Look at that, fantastic. So those were my McKinney Knittery purchases. I also had yarn arrive while I was away and my sweet neighbors who were like the best, um, they were both pediatric nurses. They're retired now. All of my neighbors are approaching 80 and I love that because they're so sweet and our street is so quiet. We live in a college town and our old house that we lived in was really close to campus and uh, the University of Oklahoma is like a big university. Um, and so we always had students like surrounding us. And let me tell you, like you end up with pants in your lawn, red solo cups in your lawn, you screaming, partying like all night long. I will never forget <laughs> one time when we were leaving the house, the, there were a bunch of girls like living in the house next door to us and they were having some kind of fight. And all I heard was one girl say to another, Brittany, the house stinks. And like they were having, a fight because apparently Brittany was making the house stink. But anyway, I don't know. So it's rough living around students and our street now is so quiet and we just have all of these lovely people that live around us who don't make any noise. They're just sweet. They come give you tomatoes that they've grown in their gardens. Anyways, next door neighbors, they picked up our packages for us and I had a lot of yarn. <laughs> so um, this yarn is really, really special. I ordered this back in August and it came all the way from Russia and which I love, I don't know about you, I love Russian literature, love reading about Russia. I just think Russia is so, so fascinating. And I am I love history and Russia's got a really, <laughs> really active history. Um, so I think it, I just thought it was really cool to be able to order yarn from a Russian dyer. And her work is absolutely stunning. Like, it's just like a painting. It's just so beautiful. So this is Yarn by Stu. As mentioned, she's from Russia, so it took a while for this yarn to get here, but that's kind of standard now. International shipping takes a while. I expect that. It's fine. Um, so this arrived, you know, middle of September, ordered it beginning of August, and that's about standard. I'm totally cool with that. It was worth the wait because just look at it. So this one is the colorway pumpkin, and I love that because it is so the color of pumpkins. Like when you go to um, hippy dippy expensive grocery stores, <laughs> And they have all the fancy pumpkins that are like $20 for these like beautifully colored, like enormous pumpkins, like all the different varieties. That's what this looks like to me is the fancy pumpkin pile at the hippie dippy grocery store. So love that color. This particular color is levitation. And again, I'm so super attracted to blues with coppers in them. I just love them. And it's even prettier than it was on her website. Love that one. 
And then this one. This one is velvet and it's just perfect. Like again, it's a purple. I said I don't like purple, but I tend to order a lot of purple yarn for someone who doesn't like purple. And look at that. Like, mmm, mmm. This. Love it. So really good yarn. Really, really good yarn from Yarn by Stu. So check her out. And I will put links to all of these um, dyers, the McKinney Knittery, all of that in the description to this video. So if you want to check out any of this yarn for yourself, that's where you can find all the information. The next little bundle of yarn came from Little Lion Head Knits. I've talked about her before on my Instagram. I've used a lot of her yarn in my patterns. Her color palettes are just they're like my brain, like everything that I picture that I love in my brain, the colors I'm attracted to, she just does it. And it's absolutely stunning. Like, oh, I just, I love her colors. So I bought more tonals. This is a sock yarn. This is her fingering weight yarn. And this is Quill, um, really beautiful blue that I'm going to pair probably with an orangey red because I love blue and orangey red, like light blue. I think that looks so good. And then these are DK weight skeins. And this beautiful green is mossy forest, which ah, name alone, like when fall is coming, that's all I want is a mossy forest. I don't have any mossy forest where I live. Again, just dead brown trees in the winter time. But um, I imagine what it would be like to live in the Pacific Northwest or in the Shire, which <laughs> doesn't exist, but that's where I want to live, is in a hobbit hole. And this is just the most perfect hobbit hole, mossy forest color there ever was. And I absolutely love it. This one is called Let's Picnic. And it's just a really pretty vibrant, deep orange. Again, perfect for fall. All those fall colors that I just absolutely love. But I love pairing really warm colors like this with something cool. I just think that beautiful, cool blues just pop off of, I mean, look at that. Mm, so good. So that's all my yarn mail. This big, big giant bundle is what has come in recently or that I've purchased recently. Um, when I travel, I just lose all control. Like I don't have any impulse control because traveling is so exhausting. Like when you get older, it's easy when you're 20, you're like, yeah, let's just drive 1500 miles to Burning Man or wherever. But when you're older, it's like, oh my gosh, I spend three hours in the car and I'm just like, screw everything. I wanna buy all the snacks, all the yarn, just to make myself feel better about how uncomfortable this is. So yeah, lost total impulse control whilst traveling and dealing with, with Sally and everything else. So um, now let's talk about the socks I've been knitting. And I posted these on Instagram. When we got to Florida, I was just like, all of a sudden, I need to knit Mermaid Avenue socks. I'm at the beach, you know? So that's what I did. I knit another pair of Mermaid Avenue socks. And I'd actually forgotten how to knit them. I knit like, I don't know, I think I did two pairs when I wrote the pattern back in June. Um, and I'd forgotten. So I had to actually um, follow my own pattern again <laughs> just to be able to knit these, which was helpful because one of my biggest fears when designing sock knitting patterns is that the pattern is just going to be a big old mess and you're not going to understand it because I wrote it poorly. Um, so I always appreciate feedback on my patterns and thankfully a lot of you tell me that they are clear and easy to understand and phew, you have no idea what a relief that is because I want you to have fun when you knit my socks and there is nothing worse than opening up a pattern and it makes no flipping sense and you just want to knit the thing and you can't because the instructions are just garbled and, and make no sense. So that's my biggest fear. Really happy when you guys leave me feedback that it's easy to understand and I found this one very easy to understand when I went back to knit these again, but I had such a good time. I modified them. I only did the mermaid stitch pattern on the leg, not the foot, because I wanted to see what that would look like. And I love it. I think it looks fantastic. So I was able to get one whole sock done at the beach and only like a little bit of the second one because, you know, I did get distracted by losing power and going outside in hurricane winds to see what they felt like. I'm not sure if you're supposed to do that. Like, are you, when there's hurricane force winds, you're probably not supposed to go outside to be like, oh, what does this feel like? And I did. Um, there was stuff blowing around. I mean, I probably could have been hit in the head by something. I don't know. But nonetheless, um, I, I was distracted by other things. So I at least got to photograph one on my foot at the beach, you know, with the sand and the ocean. And so that was exciting. And then once I finished them, I photographed the rest of, you know, the whole set up here at home, put that on my Instagram page. If you're not following me on Instagram, I'll put the link to that in the caption below this video so that you can follow me there. I post a lot of 
little mini tutorials, um, obviously photographs of my socks and everything else. Um, so you can see the finished video or the finished photo of both socks on my Instagram. The other socks that I knit, I knit this in the car on the way to Florida um, in like two days because it was so much fun. I just couldn't stop. This is a color work sock that I'm working on and I'll be writing up a pattern for this as well. And you can also see a photo of this. Well, no, I didn't post a photo to my grid. I think I posted a photo of it on my foot to my stories. Um, but I'll throw that photo up on the screen now so you can see what it looks like on a foot. Um, but this sock was super fun to knit. I used the Addy Easy Sock 10 inch mini circulars where one needle is longer than the other. So if you have hand cramping when you knit with tiny circulars, these are these make it a lot better. I do not like tiny circulars. They always make my hands cramp and the Addy Easy Socks definitely helped with that. So I use those for the leg of the sock, the color work portion, and then I switched to Magic Loop for the foot doing the stripes. And man, it was a lot of fun. I see a lot more color work socks in my future with those little guys because they made color work a lot easier than trying to wrangle strands with Magic Loop. Um, so yeah, that was a lot of fun and I loved that sock. The third sock, the one I'm working on now and I'm racing to get it done. Um, last episode, I talked about this upcoming pattern. This is the Little Black Socks. They come out October 1st. Really cool cable detail down the seams. Um, beautiful texture panel in the front. I am knitting up a second version of these. I really like for my patterns to include options for you so that if you're not ready to tackle a particular skill yet, you've got options and you can do something that maybe you're familiar with. So I am knitting up a second version with a different heel so that you can choose what you're comfortable doing. And it's in this beautiful yarn. The color is Oxalis and it's by Casual Fashion Queen. I've talked about her before too on my Instagram. I flip and love her. She's fantastic. All of her yarn is gorgeous. Look at this exquisite little apple cake. It, this to me looks like an apple from one of those fancy hippy dippy grocery stores. <laughs> it's just gorgeous. I absolutely love it. And so um, I think she's still got a few up in her shop. I'll put the link to Casual Fashion Queen in the description of the video as well, but mm, so good. So that's what I'm working on this weekend is to finish up this second version of the Little Black Socks so I can include those options for a different heel and a slightly different cable um, in the pattern. I'm also going to be filming a beginner cable work tutorial video so you can see just how easy knitting cables are. They look so complicated. I remember when I was first learning to knit, looking at cables, I thought that's magic and I will never be able to do something that complicated. And when I finally bit the bullet and decided to learn, I like hunkered down. I was ready to go. I thought this is going to be some marathon thing where this is going to be so hard. And it was so easy. I had no idea. So if you've never knit cables before, they're so much easier than they look. And I'm definitely going to film a tutorial video showing you the basics of how to knit cables. And on socks, man, for fall, like it doesn't get better than that. When you're talking about fall sock knitting, to me, this is this is it. Cables and color work, especially for the holidays, like holiday socks. Oh my gosh, so many opportunities to play with color and so many opportunities to play with texture. And to me, that's what fall and the holidays are all about, color and texture. So I think that's gonna be a lot of fun. All right. That's the knitting stuff. I've talked about the yarn, I've talked about the socks. Um, I said that I was not going to tell stories about my dad and I'm gonna do my best not to. <laughs> so I will move into dating stories first. Um, last week I talked about the boy who sung to me at Whataburger and that was horrifying. So if you want to hear that story, check out episode two um, and I tell you all about that. So. In these podcast episodes, I told you for a while, I'm going to tell you dating stories. I really don't have a ton of them. I was an introverted, awkward, shy teenager person. And so I didn't date a ton. I met my husband when I was 19. We got married when we were 21. So I was not out in the world doing the dating thing for very long. So um, I, I didn't date a ton, but the ones I did date were very, very memorable. <laughs> So if you saw last week's episode, you know about the boy who spontaneously burst into song in a Whataburger and started singing at me and it was just my nightmare because I don't like being sung to. Who does? Um, this week I will tell you about the boy who hid packaged steaks in his pants. So this was 1999, first of all, to set the scene. If you are not familiar with fashion of the late 90s, early 2000s, then 
you don't know about Genco jeans. If you are from that era, then you know exactly what I'm talking about when I say Genco jeans. I will throw a picture up on the screen just to give you a picture in case you're not familiar. Um, they were enormous, basically, just these huge, enormous jeans that were so unflattering, but yet everyone wore them. I had a pair. <laughs> I hate to admit that, but I did. I saved up for them. I went to the mall and I got them and I was just so happy. I had Jinko jeans. Everything was right with the world. Um, and then after Jinko's became unpopular, it was mud jeans with two Ds. I don't know if you remember mud jeans, but I had a pair of those too. <laughs> oh, but anyways, Jinko jeans, enormous. You could hide all kinds of things in them. That's how big they were. You could probably steal a watermelon out of a grocery store. Um, several cantaloupes, at least. You could fit a lot of stuff in these pants. And so this boy I was dating, he lived with a roommate and both of them were butchers at a grocery store there in town. And so they shared an apartment and his roommate was dating a lovely girl who I just loved. We were friends. We both loved to clean and we would clean their apartment because it was disgusting. And we would talk about cleaning and it was great. We liked a lot of the same music. She was great. So this particular evening, we were sitting in their apartment and I remember we were sitting there talking and he came in the door and he was walking funny. <laughs> so you can see where this is going. So he came inside walking funny and then he just started pulling package after package of steaks and meat, like packaged meat out of his pants. And that's like what they did. And I didn't know this, but they worked at the butcher shop and when they would work a shift, they'd steal meat and hide it in their pants and then bring it home. And so that's what happened. This, this boy that I was dating walked in a door and started pulling packaged steaks out of his pants, one after another. Like you wouldn't believe how many he had managed to shove down in there. Well, you would believe it if you knew about Jinko jeans and, and how enormous they were. So I remember sitting there and I was just thinking, Summer, this, this, this cannot be your life. You cannot, you cannot be sitting in an apartment watching someone pull meat, packaged steak. I don't even like steak. I don't like meat. I don't eat meat that much. I'm mostly a vegetarian, like by accident. It's not like an ethical choice. I just don't like the taste of meat. So also kind of my nightmare to watch someone bringing forth packages of steak out of their pants. So that relationship ended shortly thereafter. Um, most of my relationships were fairly short-lived because again, I just kept attracting people who did things like that. Um, so <laughs> thank goodness I met David. I don't know where I'd be. And now like with dating, the online stuff, the Tinder and the um, grinder is that what it's called? Grinder, Tinder, um, and then Bumble and Match and Christian singles and silver singles and Oh my gosh, it's, it's so much. I can't imagine. I cannot imagine trying to meet people like in the way the world is today. And especially now with COVID, like you can't even, like, it's just, it's mind blowing to me. I would, I would just be alone. I would just say, you know what? No, not worth it. I'm just, just going to keep getting animals and be happy with that because there's no way I could handle it. I'm too awkward. It's too, it's too late for me. I just couldn't do <laughs> any of that. So if anything ever happens to David... It's just going to be me and a bunch of animals because I'm not messing with that. There's no way I could do it. And you've read like the stories and seen like the Instagram account, Tinder Nightmares, where people are just horrible. They say the, well, people, it's usually, it's usually guys <laughs> that say the most horrible things to people. And it's, I just don't understand it. So, um, anyways, that's my dating story. Um, I am going to sneak in a dad story. I'm really sorry, dad, if you're watching this, but this one's mostly about my stupidity and not necessarily about my dad. So when he was telling me, don't talk about me in your YouTube videos anymore, he was kind of laughing and I couldn't tell if he was joking or not. And that's the thing with my dad is that he's a completely different person now than he was when I was a kid. When I was a kid, you know, he was still working. He was a school superintendent. That is not a nine to five job. That's a 7.30 to five job. And then you go home and eat dinner and then you get back out and you work some more. You have school board meetings, Lions Club meetings. You have football games, basketball games you have to be at. I mean, my dad worked a lot. He was always really tired. So when he was home from work, it was like, you better be quiet. There better not be any shenanigans. 
no nonsense, and he just had a permanent scowl on his face. And so I got to where I could read him pretty well. And I knew, I knew when things were bad and I needed to hightail it. Like if I was being too loud or if I had done something stupid again, <laughs> like my dad's face would darken. And you knew, you knew you needed to like make for safety. Now my dad, since he's been retired, he's like so mellow. It's like, I would expect to see him in one of those Tommy, you know, like if you watch The Office, Stanley, when Stanley went to Florida, Florida Stanley, he was like in his Tommy Bahama shirt and his convertible and he was like totally relaxed and unlike Stanley, every other episode of The Office, that's my dad. My dad is Florida Stanley. He's got, you know, the Tommy Bahama shirt, super mellow, listening to Jimmy Buffett, Margaritaville, like he's just totally chill all the time and his face is so like relaxed and it's hard for me to read now I don't know when he's serious or not he doesn't have that thunder face anymore so yeah I couldn't tell I don't know if he was serious or not but one time when I was 16 my first car was a 1984 Lincoln Town car <laughs> and it was the size of a yacht it well not like a big yacht, not like like a Saudi Arabian prince yacht, but like, you know, a smaller one. Like maybe, um, you know, like someone who owns several car dealerships and they go to the lake a lot, that big, like that kind of like mini yacht. But it was massive and it had velour midnight blue seats and it had wood grain interior and it was just a freaking boat. And that's what I had to learn to drive on. And thank goodness, because now I can drive anything. You could put me in a semi truck and I'd figure it out because learning to drive on a car that enormous, you just gain all kinds of good skills. So, but when I first started driving it, I was not very good <laughs> at all. And I had a tendency to pick up animals off the side of the road <laughs> because I didn't want them to get hit. So dogs, cats, I once hit a cat in my closet for like three days before my parents found out. Um, just what I did, just constantly picking up animals. Anyways, I had just started driving. I had my license. I was still a new driver. I was driving down the road. This is rural Oklahoma. Saw a dog by the side of the road, pulled over, picked it up, put it in the car, and that dog did not want to be in my car. It was not happy about it. From the minute the door shut, that dog was like, get me out of here. I don't like this. <laughs> I went out. I didn't listen to the dog because I thought this is for your own good. I need to get you somewhere where you're not going to get hit by a car. And so I'm driving down the road. The dog is flipping out. And I keep like turning around, trying to calm this dog down. And I ended up driving into a ditch. And this particular road, the ditches were super steep and there were metal culvert drainage things on them. So driving into the ditch was kind of a big thing. Like I blew out two tires floored it through this ditch, ended up in these people's front yard. And I will never forget, they were sitting on their front porch eating ice cream with their pot belly pigs. <laughs> and I came plowing like right into their yard in this giant Lincoln Town car. It was like a Wes Anderson movie, like come to think of it. But that's, that's Oklahoma. If you if you run your car off the road into someone's yard, chances are they'll be sitting on their front porch eating ice cream with their pot bellied pigs. So Car rolls to a stop. I'm looking around at the people with their ice cream and their pigs, and I'm like, crap, I am in it. I got out, I had blown two tires, like they were shredded, like there was no hope for these tires. Um, had to call my dad, and my dad was at some kind of function. I had to call him away from this town function, and so I went in these people's houses, there were more pigs, and I'm on the phone with pigs milling around my ankles, calling my dad, and I was like, something's wrong with my tires. <laughs> you need to come get me. I didn't tell him the whole story because I just, I couldn't, I didn't have the courage. So he shows up, sees the car and it was like, sees the dog in the back, still in the back seat. The dog is like barking its head off. And he knew instantly what I had done. He knew that I'd picked up a dog, gotten distracted, drove into a ditch. So that face, that was the thunder face. The one that I totally understand and know means you're in trouble. This is bad. And yeah, the whole point of that story was that he doesn't make that face anymore. So I don't know when he's serious or not. I don't know when he actually, you know, means business anymore. So that's my dad's story that I snuck in this week, but it's mostly about my stupidity. So I think he'll let that one slide maybe. Um, but next week I might tell you what his very favorite word is. He has a particular word that he uses a lot. And I think 
you'll be surprised at what it is because you would not expect a burly 60 something year old Indian man to love this word so much, but he does. And so, um, if he doesn't get on to me for this week, I will share my dad's favorite word in next week's podcast. Um, so yeah, so that's my, that's my stories. We talked about yarn today. We talked about hurricanes and the accidental driving into them for vacation. What a great freaking vacation, <laughs> like been trapped with COVID since March and finally figure out, okay, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to take this really safe trip, do everything in my power to make it as safe as possible. And a hurricane was just like, Hey, forming in the Gulf came after us. It was crazy. Um, but anyways, talked about upcoming socks, talked about sock patterns. I will link everything in the description to this video. Let me know in the comments if there are things you'd like me to talk about. Tell me about your dads. I want to know what kind of dads you guys have. Cause there's like, you know, there's the standard quintessential dad, but they're all kind of unique in their own way. So, um, tell me in the comments, tell me about your dads. I want to know. Um, I do appreciate all the fantastic dating stories you guys left me last week in the comments. Several of you also got sung to and also found it awkward, which I found extremely validating, but it's not just me. If you too have a boyfriend who secreted meat inside of his Jinko jeans, please let me know that I'm not alone in that as well, because I would really like to know if you also dated thieves who were creative in the way that they absconded with their goods. Um, and then yeah, tell me about your dads because I do, do wanna hear about your dads. So once again, everything's in the description of the video as far as links hit like, hit, hit subscribe if you appreciate what, what I'm doing here. And um, I will see you guys next week. Make sure to follow me on Instagram if you aren't already to stay updated on socks, yarn, patterns, all that good stuff. Um, and yeah, thanks for watching.